Let's start with this practice problem here. You have a diver and she springs upward from a board that's three meters above the water. At the instant she contacts the water, uh, her speed is nine meters per second. If she had a, a magic speedometer in the, in the belly, it would read nine right as her fingers touch the water. And she enters the water going at an angle of 75 degrees with respect to the surface of the water. We're asked to find the initial velocity vector. Now a velocity vector, or any vector, has two parts. The magnitude, always a positive number, that's the size. That's represented by the length of the vector. And, uh, and then the direction, okay? Now, let's do this problem together. Uh, there's the board. It's three meters above the water. I don't know why the water's yellow. Maybe not enough chlorine. Uh, she dives in a parabolic arc, and when she enters the water, her body is moving 75 degrees with respect to the horizontal surface of the water. Now, from the moment, from the moment that her toes leave the board to right before her fingers touch the water, she's in free fall. Her acceleration is 9.8, call it 10 meter per second every second, down. Now, folks, what I'm seeing is a lot of people are trying to solve these projectile motion problems without the table. If you don't have that table, you're likely to get the problem wrong. That's been my experience over the years. Okay? So do yourself a favor. Whenever you see that something's going in a projectile motion, uh, immediately make that table. Now, in the coordinate system that we typically choose where up is positive y, the y part of the acceleration is negative 9.8, call it negative 10 meters per second every second. And there's no acceleration in the x direction. Now, um, she ends up three meters below where she starts out. So that's a minus three meters. Okay? The delta y. My question is, where do I put that nine meters per second? Nowhere, absolutely nowhere. Folks, what I find over and over again is that people use these equations <clears throat> incorrectly. These are one-dimensional equations. You can either use them for the X list or you can use them for the Y list, but you can't mix and match. And, and that nine meters per second is not in the X direction, it's not in the Y direction. I can't put it in any of those equations. Okay? And so I have to break that vector up into its x part and its y part. Now, the x part is going to be the 9 times cosine of 75 degrees, because that x part is cozy with the angle, and the y part is going to be the 9 times the sine of 75 degrees. Now, that vector goes to the right and down. It's to the right, so it's positive x. It's down, so it's negative y. Now, when I use my calculator, I get 2.3 and negative 8.7. Now, here's, here's half the problem. Remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find the initial velocity vector at which she launches off the board. That's our goal. Well, that velocity vector has an x part and it has a y part. I just, I just found the x part. Because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, the initial and final in the x direction is always the same. Uh, it's like taking this and every second adding zero to it. And so that means I've got half my problem done. I know that the x part of the initial velocity is 2.3 meters per second. Now if I find this uh, y part of the initial velocity, I'm done. So what I'm looking for is this right here. That makes the time who cares. 
and that means I go to the equation that doesn't have time in it. There's time, there's time, there's time. I have to use that last equation. And I just plug and chug at this point. The 8.7 goes here. Notice I didn't waste any ink or any blue photons there, because I'm going to square it anyway. Uh, I have this that I'm looking for. I've got my acceleration here. I've got my three, my negative three here. Both of these minus signs are critical. If you leave out one of those, uh, you're going to get a, a drastically <coughs> wrong answer. Um, if you leave out both of them, you get the right answer, but you shouldn't. That's just a fluke, okay? Two rights don't make a wrong, but three lefts make a right, okay? Okay, now, I get V initial squared is equal to 16. That gives me the answer of V, final, v initial Y is equal to plus 4 or minus 4. I choose the plus 4 because she's going up. Now, the speed, if she had a speedometer in her belly, the speed is the magnitude of this total velocity vector. And that's going to be, by Pythagorean theorem, 2.3 squared plus 4 squared square root. And if I had asked her at what angle she left the board, well, that would be given by the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Remember, there's only two trick problems that we solve in this class, over and over and over. And that's the second one. And we, we talked about that the, the second day of class. OK, see if your neighbor's on board with this problem. Yes, sir. On the exam, do you care if we include units in our work? Oh, um, as long as the units are in your final answer, uh, we'll be fine with it. Okay, often I leave out the units as I work through and then put it in at the end. And I don't do that because I'm lazy. I'm not saying I'm not lazy, I am lazy, but I'm finding that if I put in all the units all the way through, sometimes people get lost in the mess. And if I just put the numbers, they can, they can see it better. So it's not that I'm sloppy. I found that this works. <laughs>